How to do folks, Carson Payne here with this, uh, another addition to our Wayne County Homemakers Happy Chippers Group's uh, YouTube page. Well, actually it's the Wayne County Home Extension Service YouTube page, and we just put some videos on there about wood carving. And this month, along with the direction of Mr. Seth Hart, the uh, arts agent here at Wayne County Extension Service, we're going to do a simple little project that is near and dear to everybody's heart. If y'all can see this, it's a little bitty book, little tiny book. And there's so many things you can do with these little items here. And they're very easy and very simple to carve. And uh, you can take and make a Christmas tree ornament out of it, sim similar to what I've done this one right here. Put a little screw hook in the top of it and you can hang that on your Christmas tree. I use a little bit larger scrap of wood and every one of these I made out of scraps of wood that I had left over from other projects. And you can even take and put a magnet on the back of it, glue it on, make it a refrigerator magnet to stick on your refrigerator. Or you could even take and put a sc small screw hook in it and make a pendant to hang around your neck to give to your girlfriend or your boyfriend, whichever one you wanna, wanna give it to. And the tools you're gonna to need to do this are gonna be the V gouge that you've got in your kit. You're gonna need, of course, a carving knife. Uh, this is my go-to carving knife. You've got the uh, Warren tools in your, in your uh, kit. And uh, you may wanna use a ruler for some of it or a fixed blade knife. And one of the main things you need to remember is your strop your carving glove, and your thumb protection. Because let me tell you what, the thumb protection is very important. And even if y'all can see the little spot I've got right here, I was using the belt sander and my hand slipped and I just barely touched the sanding belt that was going around and I knocked all the hide off that knuckle right there <laughs> off that thumb. So you've got to be careful in whatever you're doing, but we're going to, uh, uh, get ready here, and we're going to show you how to make this simple little book and go through it. And we'll be right back with the uh, project. Okay, so now the first thing you need to do before you get started is to strop your knife. Make sure you strop your knife properly, because if you don't have a, knife, a sharp knife, it's going to be very difficult to do the wood carving. You're going to chew the wood up instead of cutting the wood. So always strop your knife before you begin. where you've got it down to the point that the, poly, the edge is polished and sharp and sharper than stank, as I like to say. You can see when, while you're stropping how the metal is wearing off of the knife. You'll notice the little area right there that this blade is covering. It's uh, taking metal off and turning it darker. So always strop your knife, wipe your blade off, put your thumb protection on and your carving glove. Okay, now whenever you uh, take your block, and as I said, I'm use, I used for these books here, I used all scrap material. And what I did, I just went through my scrap box. I've got a little scrap box that I throw the cut off pieces in. And I picked out sizes that would work and look almost like a, a miniature book size where it's got the, the length and the, and the width and everything is in, pretty well in proportion if you could think of that as a blown up, totally big book. And what I come up with was a little rectangular piece of wood, maybe about a half to three quarters of an inch thick. What you've got to do first is think about what a book looks like. What does that book look like? You know, it's got indentions on the top. So what you've got to do is lay out your lines. And to do that, take about, oh, about 16th of an inch, maybe an eighth and go lines all the way around the top, the front, well, if your pencil slips, that's all right, just go back and do it again.
do it around all three sides like that. And also along the back side, showing the spine of the book. Draw it right like that. Okay, now also books have where the spine, the back opens up, you can see it's got a little indention near the back. So you'd take the same measurement and make a mark down each side like this for making for delineating where the spine opens up. Okay, after you get that drawn in, on top, front, back, and on each soil, this one I'm gonna straighten up a little bit. But like I say again, if you mess up on your drawing, it's all right, erase it, or draw over it again, just as long as you know which mark you're supposed to be cutting is what's important. Okay, after you do that, there's, there's two different ways you can do this next step. This is the V-tool that that's in your kit. And you can take and cut those lines with that V-tool to begin with. All right, like that, right along the lines. Or you can take your knife blade and incise that line with your knife blade and come back and do a V cut to pop that little piece out and do it that way. You can do it either way. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one with the knife. If it doesn't pop out right off the bat, that's all right, you can always go back and cut it one more time. to get your little piece to pop out like that. So you can do it either way. And uh, you may like one way better than the other. Personally, I like cutting it with my knife blade and making a V cut with the knife. I also do that across the back the same way. And then do your a little V cut to pop that out. Now, what when you're when you're doing these, you've got to realize we're trying to represent an old antique book. And if you've ever dug out an old book out of the attic or out of a trunk somewhere where it's been stored or even in the, in the shed or, or in the barn, that it's not uh, real straight and it's not real, uh, real cleaned up. So after you get your, all of your V-cuts done, I'm gonna clean these uh, marks right here up just a little bit with my knife to make the V-cut.
Okay, after you've got that done, now you don't do a V-cut with your knife down this. You're gonna take, for, for the area on the spine, you're gonna take your V-tool and you're just gonna make a, a V-cut right down the spine. That little indention right there. How deep does it need to be, Carson? Just, it depends on how deep you want your pages to set in inside the spines of the book. You know, it can be shallow or it can be deep. Either way, it depends on how deep you want the spine to, uh, to set in, okay. the pages to set in from the, the backs of the books. Okay, after you get your, your little marks there all delineated, you can take your V-tool Lay it on its flat side and start taking out. Now the end grain's gonna be a little bit harder to do. And you inset the pages is what you're doing. You gotta make sure that your V-tool is sharp, especially on this end grain, because if it's not sharp, it's not gonna cut it. And if you'll notice, this one is not very sharp whatsoever. So what you do is you take and strop it. Your V-tool needs to be stropped just exactly like your knives do to polish the edge on it, to make sure you've got a sharp V-tool. You've got the little you've got the little strap strop in your uh, kit that the extension office provided that you can also use. It's just that I don't have uh, one out right now, so I'm just doing it here on this strop. And as far as the inside of the V, you can take the edge. If you've got a strop like this, you can take the edge and come down the edge of the strop like this to do the opposite side to strop the inside of your uh, V-tool. Okay. Again, lay it on, on its flat side. And you indent the area which is gonna show your pages. You wanna to try to do this fairly evenly across the, the total area that you've got lined up for your pages so it, uh, it's not real, real uh, lot of ups and downs in it. Always be aware of where your hand is because if that V-tool slips, you can gouge yourself right into the hand. So that's, that's another point you need to watch out while you're doing this. Now it's, it's a little bit rough and ragged looking when you do this to begin with, but we're gonna take care of that on in, uh, in just a minute. We just kind of even it up a little bit. Like you can see, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of irregular, but that's okay because the old books that used to be hand bound, the pages weren't even on the fronts of them anyhow. If you ever look at any of the old books and see that, so this is pretty good. Uh, representation of that. But now after you get that done around all three sides, what you do is you take your V-tool again and you're gonna separate to make it look like you've got pages. 
go from about middle ways up through the end like that go the opposite direction then from about the middle of the, the page and you're separating your pages. So if you can see the shadows on that, how it, it uh, make, makes it look like the pages are separated. And again, they're not even, so don't worry about trying to make them even. And you, you can put as much of this into it as you want to to get those, uh, looks like you've got your pages separated. Now we're gonna finish up this book here and you don't have to sit and watch me do it all the way around, but we'll, uh, we'll get off camera here and finish that off camera. And we'll be right back in a minute to show you what the finished product looks like after that's over with. Okay, folks, we've got it. Uh, our page is fixed now, and if you'll notice, I, I hope the light shines on that. You can see how uneven the pages look. If you've ever seen or held in your hand an old hand-bound uh, book of some type, that's exactly the way it looks. The pages aren't even, or there's nothing straight on it. And uh, even after I paint these, I also use an antiquing on them to make them look even older whenever I, I, I paint the uh, object. Okay, after you've got your indentions done, you've got the front and the back of your book. You've got the spine right here, but now, it, it, looking at that, it's just too square. So to make it look well used and well loved, I'm just gonna ease the edges just a little bit, round them off just a little bit. all the way around, especially on the spine here to make it look rounded because you may buy a book and it be square. By the time you get it opened and looked at three or four times, it starts to round off a little bit more. So to make it look well loved and well used, we're gonna round the spine off just a little bit, just very little bit. You don't have to get real aggressive with that, just kind of some a little bit. Kind of back off and look at your work a little bit to make sure it looks rounded off enough to suit you. Okay, then after I do that, your spine's going to get beat up a little bit as it's being used. So we're going to ease the, the top of that spine just a little bit. Just take your knife and ease it just a little bit to kind of give it a little bit of a beat up look. Again, you're just, you're just easing the sharp edges. make it use, look well loved and well used on the back of it. Now on the front of it, you may want to take and just take a little bit of a, a sliver off the edges of your front and back of the book as well, the binding, and at the bottom of it right here. Because like I say, if you buy a book brand new, when you take it home, there's going to be square edges. But after you use it a little bit, the square edges are going to be gone. It's going to look rounder. And that's what I'm doing with this right here is rounding the edges a little bit to make it look more natural. Or make it look well used and well loved. Get all the edges of that. Now, if you want to, you can also go to the inside of the cover 
and ease it a little bit as well. using a little bit of a push cut there and a paring cut to do that. And if you'll notice, it looks like just an old, used, well-loved book. After you get to this point, we're just about ready for paint. What you would do is take a stiff brush, like a denture brush or a, uh, a uh, little brass brush like some people use to clean guns with or what have you. It needs to be a stiff brush or brush and just brush it real good to get rid of the fuzzies off of it. And before you paint it, you do that. Okay, then paint it. Now on these here, what I did, I took and painted the leaves, the inside of the leaves with antique white. And then I chose whatever color I wanted to and I, I diluted it down pretty heavy so that it would be, uh, be kind of faded looking. Whenever I painted the books like this one was Tuscan red and uh, this one was, I think, called Viridian for that, that color green. But for every one of them, I used antique white for the leaves. Now, you could also use a, uh, a, uh, like a sunset gold, something that kind of gives a gold color to your leaves because some of the books have got that gold tint to them, especially Bibles. You know, whenever you buy a new Bible, it's got that shiny gold all the way around the edge of the leaves. Okay, after you get them painted... Whatever color you want to paint them, you can color, paint them any color you want to, gray, green, maroon, Tuscan red, dark gray, even yellow, <laughs> orange looking. I think actually that color right there was sunset gold, I believe was what the color of that was. Mm -hmm. And uh, let them dry, make a antiquing compound, and I use burnt umber paint, just acrylic burnt umber paint, for my antiquing and I, and I water it down about halfway. I cut it about half, brush it on there all over. Well, now before you put an antiquing on it though, I about forgot this. You need to spray it with a glossy polyurethane. That gives you a resist for the antiquing so you can wipe it back off. So then brush the antiquing all over it. Then just take you a cloth, paper towel or whatever and just dab it all over it until it gets as much of the antiquing off as you want. As you notice, some of these, I took more of the antiquing off, and some of them I took less antiquing off. You know, that's just kind of what, whatever you want to do your own way. But it gives it an old antique book look. And you can take an acrylic, well, if you're good enough, you can take a little um, paintbrush and letter with it. I can't do that myself. So what I do is I buy the acrylic paint markers in a real fine point. And that's how I did this ornament here with that acrylic paint uh, pen. Put ho, ho, ho on the front. Wayne County, WCPL on the back, which stands for Wayne County Public Library. And then of course, whenever you make anything, always sign it. And there's my signature CP. And I signed it and dated it. And I would suggest you do that with anything you carve or anything you do. But this is a fun little project to use scrap wood to do it with. Uh, doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Doesn't take a whole lot of time to do. And they're fun. And you can make all kinds of neat little displays out of them. You can uh, take and stack them up on a shelf. Put them on a bookshelf. To make them look like a stack of books. You can stack them up like this and make, it, make them look like they're a line of books that you've got on your bookshelf. Or you can take one of your carvings, if you've got a carving you want to display, make you a little stack of books. Kind of maybe two or three different sizes. Alternate them a little bit and then put such a little carving right on top of it. Mm -hmm. They can be glued together. They can be used as a pedestal. They're just so versatile, and they're easy to do and fun to do. And, uh, you know, all you've got to do is go through your scrap pile, 
Find you a little scrap of wood that looks to be about the proportions of a book. Remember to leave yourself to make it wide enough so that you can get in there and clean out and have your, uh, your pages lined out in the, uh, in the middle of it. I saw a little fuzzy pop up there that I hadn't taken off. But they look rough, but that's what you want them to do. Now, if you've got a lot of saw marks on the outside of the piece of wood you're using, what you may want to do is take your knife and just skin those saw marks off. Just skin them off just a little bit to smooth the, the cover down. If there's a lot of saw marks, and you may want to leave the saw marks on there for, uh, for help with the antique look. Whichever way you'd rather do it. This is your project, so you need to do it whichever way you want to. There's no wrong way to do it because it's handmade and it's yours. And whenever you make anything, own it. Sign it because somebody is going to like that because it's handmade by you. One thing I do want to emphasize when you're doing this, especially across the end grain, whatever tool you're using to indent the pages, that thing has got to be sharp because if it's not sharp, what you're going to do, you're just going to chew the wood up instead of cutting it. So if it's a V-tool or a U-gouge, whatever it is, make sure that it's sharp. I'm talking razor sharp. And you do that with your strop that you've got in your kit and um, the flat strop that you've got. But I hope everyone enjoys this project and we'll, uh, we'll be with you the next time. Thank you very much. On behalf of Wayne County Extension Service and Mr. Seth Hart, appreciate y'all watching.